GM Farcaster. It is Friday. Happy Friday, October 18th. This is me looking at the calendar to see what date it is. And you are here with Now and for 29 minutes of Farcaster News to start your day. And we are supposed to have a special guest, Burberry, Melissa Burr, popping in. Uh, and this is my background today. Some of the homies playing poker. Um, so you may recognize, I don't know. Do you recognize these two? You should, you should. These two at um, least. Yes. It's not Adrian. That and, is not Adrian. Daddy. And Sparks. And Sparks. And, Sparks. and our friend Sparks. So yeah, amazing. Um, so this is from one of the cast of the, of the poker games. And I'm excited to talk with, uh, with Burberry and I'm going to like ping her to make sure she remembers um what time we're doing this so uh but i'm looking forward to chatting with her played poker with her a couple times a lot of fun but before we jump into that we are going to um let me just live now <laughs> pop in anytime <laughs> um it, so, so hold on just just messaging you know this is a live show here we go and we don't have a producer, so uh, producer producer prop had to message the guest. So self, we are self produced. We are self produced. If you didn't know, um, so we have some things to dive into today. And um, we were talking a little bit before we came on that you know vibes have been uh, interesting. Let's not say immaculate, that's for sure. Uh, vibes have been interesting. It's been um, a little challenging lately, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna focus on some happy things. So let's uh, let's get into it. And you know what? I don't think I logged out. <laughs> so this should be fun. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> what is wrong it with me? Is while while we're waiting for <laughs> Warpcast to come up. If there is a Merkle developer um, watching, we notice that when we're logged in, it takes longer to bring up casts. Sure. So we, we try to log out before we bring up our casts, but if we forget. So we don't know why, but yeah. we should you should speed that up, please. Yeah, if you wouldn't. Great. Um, so this from Dan from DWR.eth. I hate brand accounts on Twitter but brand account interns on Farcaster are awesome. This would have been said much better with the with the meme, with the Drake meme, <laughs> the this thing. But, you know, you get what he's saying. Uh, if you mess with the interns, you mess with me. So we agree because we love the interns. And me on base is probably our favorite uh, intern, although Holly Market, we love you too. Um, I loved this from me on base, the Magic Eden intern, copying these goals and making them my own. So to-do list, get five USDC reward, and then the Vitalik follow, which is worth, it's priceless. Absolutely yeah. priceless. I have yet to get that as well. I would like that also. So Vitalik, if you want to make some people's days, just, just go follow some interns in us. We'd really appreciate it. So that would make us very happy. Would change our, change our moods around completely. <laughs> Don't you think <laughs> the 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 ever the ever elusive Vitalik follow? Um, in some You're other worth, news, but I just say though, it doesn't ahead, bother. I don't need yes. I don't need internet celebrities and Ethereum founders to follow me to feel good about myself. I cast <laughs> things that I find interesting. I cast about what I'm learning. I have tons of friends on the timeline, and. I don't even know if Vitalik follows me. Maybe he does, but I maybe feel, he does. But I don't need it, <laughs> and I don't need your five USDC either. Um, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I don't need it, but I'll take it. And it is not your worth. Yes, of course, it is not your worth. But also, um, you know, Vitalik, if you want to give us a follow, we'd appreciate it. Uh, this from V and Hi Melissa, Burr, we see you down there, and we'll bring you up in just a moment. Uh, FIP location and user profiles. We plan to release a new Hubble version and broadcast location info on Friday, which is today. We need to minimize versions hubs on Friday to make this work. If you have a custom hub set up with auto upgrades disabled, 
and will not be able to upgrade by Friday, please let us know ASAP. Um, and it goes on to tell you why this is necessary. So if you are running a hub, please make sure you check this out. Um, so really just the hub runners who also are not getting rewards for doing so. Um, <laughs> if you are not running a hub, rewards. you don't need to uh, run a hub because you won't get rewarded for it. You will not. There is no not incentive today. for running in case you didn't know. Um this from Horsefax, draft spec for mini app transaction requests. Goals are one, let composer actions and mini apps request transactions from user's wallet. And two, keep this as similar to frame transactions as possible. Feedback is welcome. So go take a look at that. So this is expanding upon what you can do with mini apps. So this is exciting. So I would think this also might mean something like trivia could pay out to their winners like directly in the app, which would be pretty cool. Um, this from Board, which made me laugh hysterically. You'll laugh as well as soon as it comes up on the screen and I can read it. Um, but uh, I'm realizing that a lot of people are just finding out about channels. <laughs> The channel changes. Tons of people are private messaging me asking to become members of Confessions in order to be able to post in the channel. I'm confused. Can anyone post in it now? So uh, if you've been gone for a moment, um, there are new warp. There's a new Warpcast update that changed channels and made them community gated. So you can open yours up if you like. There are ways, but people still need to join. And I'm sure that we're going to continue to see this like over and over again from people who are just aren't, you know, terminally online like us and who obviously aren't watching or listening to GM Farcaster. <laughs> so that would have saved you, Board, would have saved you from all of this. You would have known, but it's OK. We got you. Uh, this from Chris Dixon. This was sort of the big news yesterday. Today, we released our latest state of crypto report. It shares insights on key trends like stable coins, L2s, and AI, plus crypto's rise as a policy issue, new data on builders and users, and more. Seven takeaways from the report. One, crypto activity and usage hit all-time highs. Two, crypto has become a key political issue ahead of the U.S. election, which I think is probably one of the bigger, bigger things that have happened in this past year. Three stable coins have found product market fit. Four major scaling upgrades have drastically reduced on chain transaction costs. Five DeFi remains popular and it's growing, aka meme coins. Six crypto could solve some of AI's most pressing challenges. Seven more scalable infrastructure has locked new on chain applications. I'm assuming this is referring to things like base. Uh, so, uh, and on the stable coins, have found product market fit. Um, one other note is that I've seen a lot of um, information about um, uh, MoonPay this morning announcing that they are going to be integrated with Venmo. Um, we've seen PayPal come out with their stable coin. So I do think that that has been a big moment in this past year as well. Um, have you had a chance to look at this, by the way, Adrian? Um, I haven't had a chance I read to dive there, in. Just the, just the blog post. So have okay. it down, maybe. Any take other takeaways that you wanted to highlight? Um, no, but good. in my traditional, like, glass half full, I think a um, lot of a lot of good things out of it. And um, yeah. and obviously, like, and I, you're pulling it up here, but the, the Farcaster slide's my favorite. Yeah, obviously, this is our favorite. <clears throat> it's early days for decentralized social networks. But vibrant developer ecosystems are emerging around protocols like Farcaster. That's pretty big that this is mentioning so many different um, projects and clients and integrations to Farcaster within this image in a report like this. So that's pretty huge. Um, and if you want to dive into more detail on Farcaster's statistics and what's happened over the past um, year, couple of years, uh, you can take a look at the State of Farcaster report from Snickerdoodle, which is also pretty good. Um, and a little reminder, yes. if you look at this list, and we just talked about this, I think, earlier this week, this is not a comprehensive list of everyone Correct. building on Farcaster. Um, because Farcaster is permissionless, it's actually impossible to build a 
comprehensive list. There's no, I think there's no way we'll ever have a definitive um, source of truth for, for, for what is being built. Um, so. Yeah. And also, this is also looking at more uh, infrastructure related things. And, you know, even though it does say community, it did include Farcom, which was great. There's a lot of those types of things that you're not going to see. You're not going to see Burr Friends Poker Community. You're not going to see GM Farcaster and what we're doing, like those kind of things, Yellow Collective and what they're doing. Like you're not going to see some of those aspects that just aren't going to get captured in here. Um, but I was impressed with a lot of the ones that did. So that was pretty cool. Great to see. Um, so thank you, A16Z and uh, Chris Dixon. We appreciate you. Um, very cool report. And uh, in other news, um, this from Kojo, NASA just launched the Europe Europa Clipper that will take 5.5 years to reach its target, Jupiter's orbit. One goal is to spot signs of life on Europa. I hope I'm saying that right. By that, it's one of the moons, I think, on uh, going around Jupiter, if I'm correct, if I remember my, uh, whatever, astronomy class that I took forever ago. By that time, Farcaster will have 600 million users, <laughs> and we'll look back to see who got this right. Will NASA find signs of life on Europa? So you can go and, uh, you know, put your, put your, uh, uh, five years from now. So bullish uh, on Kojo to be asking a question that's that far uh, ahead that we won't have the answer for for a long time. So that was pretty cool. Um, this from Linda, we launched two new categories on Bounty Caster. Resumes, bountycaster.xyz slash resumes. For sale, bountycaster.xyz slash for sale. These are similar to our bounties where users can post and connect peer-to-peer -peer like Craigslist. Since it's a V1, DM me to get your resume or item up. Feedback welcome as we're iterating quickly. So pretty cool to see the next iteration of this. Uh, and um, you don't have to use LinkedIn, Adrian. There you go. If you're ready to <laughs> go, find a, go find a real job, <laughs> we can do that. No uh, <laughs> this from Unlock Protocol. Unlock Labs has introduced Unlock Prime, a premium membership tier that offers enhanced features and exclusive benefits for creators and communities built with Unlock Protocol. And you can dig in a little bit more into the details. There are monthly ETH rewards, unlimited events, and more. I know this is something that Borrow Lucid has been using for events that she's done, and she's really liked uh, the way that they integrate with Icebreaker, I think. So there's some kind of connection there and um, the event page creates like a place where you can see all your icebreaker connections. So pretty cool. Very cool. I think yeah. Unlock Protocol got a boost yesterday as well, which Ooh. to my knowledge is the first time a kind of um, project brand? or mm. brand got a boost. So oh, game cool. on interns. All right. Good job. Good job. Uh, amazing. Um, this from Super Anon, uh, one confirmation is now the largest hire holder, hence my little shout out to hire today. They recently acquired an additional 2% of the supply OTC over the counter from TokenPad and Martin. Their total stake, Martin is one of the founders of hire, the, their total stake is 3.5% of the supply worth about 800K. And that is pretty cool to see. Um, and it plays off of this from Burberry. This is my new favorite account on Farcaster. Follow Super Anon. All of the casts are anonymous from Supercast. Also, uh, a dating app on here would be horrible. We're down to like 50 active users. It'd be worse than dating in the world place uh, because for somebody had posted from super Anon, still convinced a dating app built on farcaster would do great uh i agree um i i agree plus i don't think so i really don't but i do like super Anon. i think it's pretty cool um as long as it stays fun as we know the anonymous accounts are fun as long as they're fun and uh and when they start to go the wrong way we don't like them anyway um this from Ted, and this kind of go to some of the vibes we've been talking about. I am pulling a Kekker's 
Dottie, and today I can feel the dangerous, dark, downward doomerism spiral start to take hold of me. Please help me stop this black pill moment. Please share something that makes you excited about the future. Please, please, please. So um, lot, what the reason I'm showing this mostly is because if you're feeling similarly, go through and scroll through the replies because they are just lovely. Uh, and there's a lot of like really cool photographs and video and comments and things to think about and, um, you know, cool stuff. So I think that um, if you go take a look through here, you'll you'll see some things to smile about. And uh, one of the other things that I don't saw, read mine, I, don't read, don't read, don't read my reply, yours. though, because in a rare in a rare change of events, I ship posted Ted and I gave her something that was a little more doomerism. So I'm sorry, Ted and everyone. Um, for me, it's this, and this was not on that thread, but also was on the timeline. And I have never seen this animal before. And I'm like, what am I looking at? It looks like a fox and a bear and a teddy bear, not even a bear, like a teddy bear. And it's adorable. And it's a red panda, also known as the lesser panda. And I'm like, I had no idea. So how adorable is that? And that's, that's oh all I just wanted you to see. Yeah. Petition to make Go it ahead. the greater pan the greater panda. Right. Um obviously the greater I saw panda. This on, the greater panda. I saw this on my feed. Warpcast does not do video autoplay. So right. I didn't hit play. I'm like, eh, didn't think it was that cute. The actual video of this freaking panda eating out of someone's hand, like it is the it is the it's cutest so cute. thing ever because it's wearing clothes too. Is it wearing clothes? It's wearing clothes. I don't know. I think it's just his fur, but it looks like or it's is... wearing clothes. Oh my god! No, you're right. It looks like he has pants on. This yeah. is the best thing I've ever seen. So right, put that right. On loop. So yeah. this will make you smile. Like if you went in doubt, go back and look at um, <laughs> when Red Panda gets a park after. I'm do, like, do you guys I want one of these as a pet? I think it, you know, if like it was, the morning. <laughs> it's probably not safe to do, but <laughs> you know the talk shows from when we were growing up. And like, and the morning shows and every now and then they'd bring like the zoo specialist yes. on and yes. who can make that happen? Yeah, I will, probably need to who, make that who's going to bring a red panda into my living room? So I, I think can... we need that. I think we need that. Um, other happy things. Uh, trivia yesterday was amazing. It was so fun. Highly recommend. Um, I totally forgot to share the audio on this, so it's not you're not going to be able to see what happened. But I will tell you very quickly. Uh, we got down to seven of us. There was a final question, and none of us got it correct. Um, and I'm still mad at myself because I could not pull the lyrics to "Off the Wall" quick enough into my head to know that that was incorrect. So I chose that, and I got it wrong. Um, but we did end up splitting between the seven of us, the 25 million based. So that was pretty cool, but also it's just really fun. So if you're not playing trivia, you really should be. So look for that for next week because they're going to do it again. It's going to run it back. And this time we had Garrett and Ted on the screen and it was really fun to see them both. So um, go check that out. Other interesting news, Adrian, I bought my second physical thing with DGen. And it's a phone. Amazing. It is not, it is not Girl Scout cookies. It is a phone. So less than a year ago, boxes of Girl Scout cookies, 90,000 DGen. Yesterday, phone, uh, which is DGen OS or um, EthOS, uh, the DGen 1, DG 1 or something like that. Um, and it was like 62,000 DGen or so, somewhere around there. So amazing. No nice. idea what this is going to be like, but um, had to do it. Like, and then uh, Yesta Crypto asked if it's actually an NFT that you're minting, and then you're going to redeem it when the phone is ready. Uh, so Yesta Crypto asked, "Oops, I didn't pull that up. Pulled up the wrong one. Um, if I minted three, because normally that is my minting strategy. I do tend to mint one to give away, one to sell, and one to keep." Um, and I did not do that this time, but I thought about it. <laughs> I really, really did. I thought about it. I still might, but I did not do that yet. Um, other news, other fun news. This is, um, the Medicaid, like arcade 
And they teamed up with OK Banger to host an epic community tournament, uh, introducing Pet Hop. You, can you guide the bunny safely across the road or will it end up roadkill? OK, well, that's a little disturbing, but um, <laughs> there's a 100 USDC prize pool split across the top three scores. Here's how you play. And it looks really cute. It's very Frogger like, but with a bunny, um, but cute, very cute. So I foresee this. Um, finding its way into the next version of cast out. So there you go. A uh, couple more things, and then we're going to jump into it with Melissa Burr, who's waiting in the wings. Uh, this from Mac Badowski the other day, we had him on, and there was some fun little notes on um, on Kiwi News. Uh, so BTW GMFR caster got some love today on Kiwi. There are even rumors about Nanish Prof's previous career. Um, so it was really nice. And what I thought was really funny was Mac's first, um, comment. I remember when GM Farcaster started and I was a bit skeptical. Why would somebody listen to a separate show about Farcaster? <laughs> Can't you just read the posts in the feed? <laughs> yes. Yes, Mac, you could. Um, I was, I was also skeptical and you know who was even more skeptical? <laughs> Adrian Face Ooh. over there, wherever you are. <laughs> Adrian Face. <laughs> It's so very skeptical about about this, um, and I really thought it was uh, it was really nice to see these comments. Appreciate it. And uh, Tim, I was never a radio announcer, but I have had like a weird experience, extensive experience in interviewing people in various uh, platforms. And uh, so, in my Web three has mostly been live media, my Web three experience. So between YouTube streaming and uh spaces weirdly enough so there you, you have go. a people like your voice you have a beautiful voice i guess so I, i've always hated my voice so i'm glad um, you guys like it so i have a question what does tim i have some thoughts but i um am curious if i'm getting this right tim says i just really felt sympathetic when i was watching their show mm -hmm. do you know what he means by that i don't know but i think he's using it in a different way than we than we think of it um i think he meant like yeah he just enjoyed the vibe is what I took it like as. humanizing. Sympathetic is probably not the right word. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just kind of the oh, we're bringing maybe empathy and 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 kind of human yeah. connection to relation, and like relates to it. Yeah, yeah. relatable. That Authentic. made me so happy. I thought that's what he meant. Yeah. And Tim, who has not been super active on Farcaster lately, Tim. Yeah, he used where to. Where did he go? Yeah. Where did he go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or is it why? Why did he leave? Did he, why did he leave? That was it. Oh, I why messed up. The okay, why did he leave? Um, but Tim, in the best way, was always a little prickly. In yep. and um, yeah, and I miss I I so it made me happy. We miss hear. you, Tim. We're we're yeah, glad we that, we're glad to back. hear from you. Yeah, and thank you, Naomi. We always love you in our chat and love to see your comments there too. Last thing before we jump up the big news of the day. Um, Dewoofy, very delayed, but very excited to publish the vibe check with Adrian and Nounish Prof. We did for their one year anniversary. So this is now available on pods.media. And um, also he went on to say that uh, he's been struggling with vibe check because he does have a new job. It's hard to fit it into his new schedule with FC growing and cozy corners proliferating. My original idea for an FC coded G go to market podcast doesn't seem to make sense anymore. So officially, the pod will go on hiatus while I decide the new direction. I have the deepest appreciation and gratitude to all my guests who've come on so far and excited to see what I can dream up as the next iteration, season two of the pod. Definitely more to come eventually. Thanks again to GM Farcaster, host for the coming for coming on the show with me. I can think uh, I can't think of a better way to cap off the first season of this experiment. So it is really hard to keep going. Um, We've seen a few people come and go or like start really, you know, strong and then, you know, things, things happen and get in the way and it's hard to keep going. So there you go. But I'm glad to see, um, do if he's been, you know, opacity has been killing it. They're, they're super busy right now. Opacity. I think I said that right. Mm -hmm. Um, so lots going on there and I'm sure it's, it's hard to find time to, to dig into this. So. Yeah. Um, and also like shows, I don't know if shows need to last forever anyway. Yeah. And it's like, you've got this <laughs> ar archive, right? Except Darcy. Dar 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 
<laughs> read between the lines. Like sometimes you just make a thing for 13 months. Anyway, uh, Dewoofy, thank you I, like for your service and having this archive of Farcaster Native Builders building in this very yeah. special time. So put a pause on it, but I'm. Uh, it's also like with content – it's there, especially on chain yeah. content. Go back yeah. to it and revisit it, and um, so. I, and, and I we think a lot it. of what Doof Luffy was working on anyway wasn't necessarily news. Like you didn't have right. to listen to it right away. So no, it's it's yeah, um, evergreen. It's so I'd, if you have missed Vibe Check, you can go check it out either on Zora or on YouTube on the GM Farcaster channel. There is a Vibe Check playlist, so they're all there. Go check them out. Um, really great interviews. Uh, he did a great job with it and, um, we've really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to bring Melissa Burr up to the stage right now. Um, I just realized I've had the wrong banner up this whole time, but we are powered by base. Um, GM Melissa, how are you? Good morning. I am <laughs> awake. <laughs> just barely. <laughs> Someone is, like, someone's oh, a shit, bit I of a, this, I have this podcast. <laughs> someone's a bit of a night owl, um, which is why this, you're the first East Coast person I think we've changed the time for, which I think is really funny. Uh, yeah. Hilarious. So what I forgot was um, the newest Mario Party game came out on October 17th, which I don't know what day it is, but it was, I think that was either yesterday. Yeah. So Wednesday at 12 a.m. it came out. Um. And we played it at midnight. We downloaded it. was available oh for download during the day. We played it at midnight. And then yesterday, didn't think we were going to play. And then my one friend who is normally playing poker, he's like, oh, we can play during the day. So I was like, eh, we're not doing anything today. We're playing Mario Party. So oh my God, that's, um, so that's funny. the benefits of not having any kind of real job. So that's what I did <laughs> yesterday. And then I stayed up late doing, doing nothing, <laughs> just staying up late. I should be playing poker, but I, I didn't do any of that either. But thanks for oh having me, guys. I'm so excited to be on the show finally. We're so I excited to chat with you and chat all things poker. Before we do that, I'm going to do one last news story, but I wanted to bring you up for it. Um, actually, wait, I also okay. need to wait, and I need to interrupt because Melissa, I, yeah. we need to, as a collective, rebrand the whatever you just said, which is the like when you don't really work because. You or or ha have a yeah. real job or whatever it is because yeah. we're all um, – what is – I don't know. There's there's something in the promise of on-chain, which is um, being able to create and live and connect and um, with economic incentive. And um, so I just I, – I think there's a lot of people like you living in this space. I don't – And there's a – Yeah, there is no word for it. Well, we'll kind of entrepreneur would be one. Yeah. I mean, for real, because you are building, you are a builder, you are creating a community and you're doing it at like warp speed. And I think that takes a lot of energy and a lot of work. So actually let's start there and then I'll circle back to the news. We can dive into that again. We'll okay. dive into that. And it's really just talking about Moxie and it really that, ties though. in. It ties into your, um, your token. So we'll, we'll circle back to that. But okay. yeah, let's talk a little more about what you're, what you're doing. Let's talk about what you're doing now, and then we'll backtrack to your background. But talk a little bit about you've been building Burr Friends. What is Burr Friends on Farcaster, and what is you know what have you been building as in terms of the community? Okay, so Burr Friends is a totally free experience that anybody with a Warpcast account can join. Um, Basically, at the at the base level, uh, we run poker games about five days a week that anyone can join. Like I said, that has a Warpcast account, and the reason why that's important is because um, I need everyone to have a proof of human, so that anyone that plays at a poker table with someone's name can say, "Oh, hey, um, Toady Hawk, um, he beat me in this hand. I'd like to go find out who that is on Warpcast." And so they search in Toady Hawk, and they boom, the name comes up, and they're like, "Oh." This, this is this person, so I can make friends with them on the social media platform. So it's very easily accessible, and they know that this person uses this site, and they connect the two, and it further proof, proves who that person is. So you have this uh, you have this one app. It's called Club GG Poker, and you have Warpcast. And basically what I did was I said, poker, 
I played poker professionally for over a decade. And I said, poker uh, inherently is the one of the most social games that you can play as a group. And while it can be somewhat detrimental if you take it too seriously or you're not gambling responsibly, it is one of the funnest games that you can play if it's taken at its core as a social fun game. So I was like, oh, um, around the time that DGEN had uh, been unveiling the differences that it was going to undergo and uh, continued to lock the DGEN, and essentially DGEN tipping got nerfed. People weren't going to lock. They weren't going to have these huge allowances anymore. And I said, well, what can we do to offset that? What can I do to help my friends keep running DGEN, keep the vibes up, and uh, continue on with this mission on WordCast? And I was like, huh, maybe we could play poker for some small prizes. And maybe with the efforts of others, I could get some sponsored games. I could get tipped and I could give it out. But this was before Moxie, right? So right. when this all started, it was like, could I get a few sponsors a week to put up money and have like one game. And before I knew it, I had so many sponsors and this is before I had sit and goes. It was just like, if I had a sponsor, I could throw up a tournament and have a big tournament. And I, before I knew it, I was having three to five tournaments a week, like hundred K ham, 10 K DGen. So many people were offering, but then I, uh, within the alpha friends group, Wake had said, do not fade Moxie. So I started digging into what Moxie was and I was like, huh, I think that I could probably create an entire ecosystem around this poker game and incentivize people to hold my token and go on to, to earn bigger rewards. But uh, similar to Warpcast, people are driven by incentive. So if you have this kind of like free experience that anyone can join, and then uh, what's important to people is that there's a progression. And that's where DGen kind of fell off, right? We stopped like being able to refresh a number going up every day. So people just lost interest. So that was what was important to me was like, here, have a free experience that anyone can join and then introduce these different progression levels. So that's why we have the Tournament of Champions, um, which is a tournament that if you hold one bar token and win one tournament uh, within a one week period, anybody uh, that does that can play in a Sunday tournament for Basically, most of the moxie that I generate for that week goes to those people to play in that tournament. And then there's even another tournament after that. So it's like I built in these different progressions so that people could say, huh, her token generates these unlocks, these other bonuses. There's like educational sit and goes with me. And I just thought that would be really fun, right? A way to inject fun back into the social experience and then give some people it is utility, right? But it's kind of like the yeah. illusion of utility. You're just having fun, earning tokens, and just having a great experience. But really, the, the utility of the entire thing is that um, people don't need to milk others for engagement. They can actually just enjoy an experience and then talk about it on a forecaster. And before they know it, they're not actually milking each other for engagement. They're just enjoying the app the way it was supposed to be enjoyed. Right. They're just talking about poker. They're talking about how the experience was. They're laughing with each other and they're learning about the other tokens because people didn't use ham before poker. Yeah. Right. They won ham prizes. I taught them how to work, how to use ham caster, all the different things. And so like slowly through Burr Friends, people are exposed to the best opportunities on Farcaster. They're exposed to your podcast. They're exposed to the best content, the best people. So I just thought like maybe it would be great to get the most quality daily active users together. And if I could weaponize that, then maybe other people would pay us to look at their products and then say, hey, this is a good group of people for us to either test on, run our products through, have them visible. And I just thought it was like a great way for everyone to win, right? Just create yeah. this win-win situation for the sponsors, for the players. And that's how Burr Friends got born. I've been shocked at like, I I've sponsored a couple tournaments now. And it, it's mostly just been to to support what you're doing because I think it's cool. It's really fun. Like here's you know here's some DGen. Have you know go go do some stuff with it. And it is amazing to me how much um, influence you've had. Like how much how, that has driven attention. And we saw a big jump in subscribers on YouTube in this last one that we did. And it was, you know, 10,000 DGEN. So it wasn't like I put a lot of <laughs> funds into it and got a huge outsized reward. So it was impressive. 
Um, I've been really like impressed with also the way you're bringing together the community. There's like an actual community growing where people are getting to know each other through the games. They're, um, you know, becoming connected on Farcaster and then working together on other things or seeing each other in other areas. So I think there's, um, there's just a lot to that. And I've always thought that about poker in general. Like I was trying to launch something a few months ago and I just couldn't get the funding for it. And I kind of backed off of it. And now I'm like, okay, I think I know the way to do this. So that's why we did a couple experiments with this where we did it during our 24 hour stream and you came on then and we played poker and we had toady on and, um, and then I'm like, you know what? I think this is the best use for Farcaster Fridays because we did a, a URL version, Farcaster Fridays, new thing, Ted launched where people are getting together IRL and I don't have anybody in my area. I really didn't want to drive to Miami. I'm like, I'll do the URL one. And we did the first one and it was okay. And we had a few people pop on. Um, and I was like, I think we need something a little more interactive where people are doing something. I'm like, poker would be perfect. Let's try that. And we did that um, this Friday, this month, uh, the first Friday of October. And it was a blast. And we had 70 something people watching live. Like while we're playing poker and we're talking and we're on the screen, so we're fun. using, it was so fun. So we're on the screen, we're chatting, um, people can see us and they can see us playing and it was a blast. So I think there's a lot to that. There's so much overlap with poker and crypto. I, I never met so many professional poker players in my life as I have since I've been in crypto. Like it's <laughs> crazy. Like yeah. they're everywhere. Um so I think there's just, it's just a natural fit. And I think there, what I really love though, if you can talk, we, you and I have talked about this before, um, crypto tech poker, all have something in common. They tend to be heavily male. <laughs> they, um, are. they are. So, but, but for friends poker, not so much. So what's going nope. on there? Like, what are you we driving in terms of that? Yeah. I mean, How are you bringing in the women? It's so <laughs> wonderful. You know what? It's it's them. It's the vibes that they're bringing. And then, you know, it just creates this even safer and more, just an even greater environment. So they see even more women uh, having fun. That brings even more women over to say, hey, this is a good, safe environment where other women are. So it's like, I don't try to overpower my timeline with feminism and like, cause that's not me, but I am supremely proud of this club for their actions, uh, for both, you know, male and female, all genders, you know, they treat each other with a level of respect that is not seen in a lot of these environments. Right. But somebody mentioned in the chat, the chat and the poker tournaments go hard, right? Because that's the one thing everyone enjoys. They enjoy coming together for a day or, or not day, an hour and just getting away from the nonsense, you know, just mm -hmm. getting to chance to talk to people that they would never otherwise meet. A lot of people go on to follow each other like, oh, who are you on Farcaster? Like, I want to follow you and talk to you, you know, and women are seeing that, you know, it's an easier way to talk to people. It's a, it's a safe environment. You know, they're not being hit on. They're not, they don't have the regular, you know, advances right. that they have and they're just finding it's a nice environment. And then, you know, you, once you, break down those barriers of like, oh, I have to guard myself. And you just see that there's other people that are willing to protect you or, you know, just make you feel safe. I think that a lot of people realize that this club is about that. And also I'm no nonsense, right? If there is nonsense going down or someone's not being nice, like I made an announcement, I'm like, this is a free club. And guess what? My way is the highway. So if you're being an asshole, I'm going to kick you out. That's all there is to it. Like I I'm yeah. going to protect these vibes at all costs, right? This is a nice club. And you're not welcome if you're going to be mean. So I think that that's a large part of why they also trust this club, because they know that I'm going to protect it with everything. And the other thing is you're being very open to teaching people how to play. Um, newcomers, like who've never played poker before, are playing and winning and having a great time and learning and connecting. And I think that's really important, too, is like you're not you're because sometimes I think people are afraid to play poker because they don't know how to play. Right. So they just don't so, want to even learn and they get nervous. I, that's the beauty of it, too, because I think a lot of people 
they have this idea in the head that you have to have skin in the game. And I don't think yeah. that's necessarily true, right? Because yeah. I've simulated this environment of gambling, but it's actually not gambling. You're playing right. for prizes that people care about because we all care about these tokens. But here it's all free and we've simulated this kind of gambling experience. You don't necessarily have to have skin in the game, right? You can have an experience where we're just like, we, we could win tokens, we could vibe, and we could have great friends. You don't necessarily always have to have skin in the game, and it's not always have to be, doesn't always have to be a cut your throat competition. And I, right. I just think that when we can uh, welcome every beginner, show that it's a safe environment, and include as many people as possible, then we can hit the next level. But, you know, the other thing that you said about education is really smart, um, and it's really necessary because if you have, like an environment that's competitive, but you have a section of people, a subset of people that just keeps losing, it's a very not enjoyable. So it was important right. to me in the beginning that I run these educational sit and goes to raise the level of play in the club so that everyone would have a chance to win. Because that's the other thing you see, you see all these excited posts. I had someone win recently and they're like, I can't believe I won. This is the greatest day of my life on Farcaster. <laughs> like I want a bar friends. And they're like, you deserve $50, not five. And it's just like, those moments are like pure joy. And you're like, wow, somebody in the other part of the world is just so excited to win this one poker tournament. It's like, you know, you created that. And I, I've missed that joy in poker, right? I'm like jaded after 20 years. I'm like, I hate this game. I don't want to kind of miserable <laughs> playing it. I've played over 10 million hands, but like this poker club, like makes me love the game again. And that's pretty exciting for me as a person and a player. Oh, I, I love hearing that. I love hearing that so much. <laughs> That's um, uh, Melissa. You can see your passion. You can see it when you talk. Yeah, it's amazing. Are the sit and goes? Is that what? Is that the learning? Is that where you're teaching people? So, it's I funny. Missed. That's okay. So an MTT stands for a multi-table tournament. So it's a bigger field, and that's how this all started: is bigger fields. But the people, they they love talking to each other so much. So they were annoyed that they kept getting moved to different tables because as the, as the tournament condenses, they change tables. So they're like talking to their friend and then they get moved and they're like, we want to just talk to the same people. So I was like, okay guys, let me introduce sit and goes, which is a nine person, one table tournament where when nine people sit down, it just starts, you sit and you go. So they, I mean, when I started those, they loved them. They're like, oh, I can sit down. I can talk to JC and Gigi and I get that one table. I know they're not going to leave until they bust and they just loved them. And now they like, they wanted to play them. I mean, when we first started these, they were playing them. Like I was just loading them with 25 games a day. Like they couldn't get enough of them. So, I mean, I, I was excited to run them because they were so excited to play them. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's really fun too. Yeah. It's really <laughs> fun. Um, and then you can watch, I think you can watch in spectator mode if you get, mm -hmm. like if you, if you lose, so you get to at least watch the rest of the game, um, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> And yes to crypto is a funny thing. I heard there are no women on Farcaster though. Yeah, this we've heard the same. They're all over on Lens, apparently. Um, except all for all poker. the women that are yeah, they're all playing poker. They're, they're all, all playing, poker. playing poker. That's why you can't find them. <laughs> but I have loved, I love that. So Adrian, even though you don't know how to play poker, you can learn. It's it's actually she's really good. She's a great teacher. Um, and it's been really fun to see this community sort of just come on it. It felt like it came out of nowhere and it's been fantastic. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. So you've been playing poker for 20 years, professional poker player. How did you even get into that? How did, like, how did so, that come about? It's a long story, but the short story is I'm allergic to alcohol. And so when I got to college, like everyone was drinking, I just had nothing to do. So I got, I was, uh, I, I was playing pool in high school and I was like, oh, I stumbled into a pool hall and I got heavily, heavily competitive into pool to like a semi-professional level. I was sponsored by Viking Cues. And then within that pool hall, they were playing poker in the back room. And then I realized there's so much more money in poker that I just kind of shifted and <laughs> kind of put pool down. And then after college, I graduated with uh, two degrees in uh, operations and marketing. And then um, I worked in uh, recruiting and operations for maybe four years. And I got laid off back in like 2000 seven or eight. And then I was like, that felt really bad. Like that someone else could just be like, Hey, you don't mm -hmm. work here anymore. And you make no money. So I was like, yeah, to hell with that. I don't like that feeling. I'm just going to move to Atlantic city and play poker. And so that's what I did. And the rest is kind of like history. But, um, 
I just really, that was a really icky feeling just to be, just to yeah. lose your job. And then that, from that point on, I think I was like, I, I think I just want autonomy over what I do for the rest of my life. So here we are. <laughs> I, Adrian, I, yeah, I feel question. that. And I feel like a lot of um, people on Farcaster feel that we got a lot of entrepreneurs and builders who like working for themselves for sure. Sorry, cut you off. What was your question for Adrian? That's okay. <laughs> Um, Adrian, the, the sit and goes that you're talking about there, I list them as poker with Burr. Um, and anytime you want to run something like that, just slide in my DMS. And I mean, everybody loves those because I just like in the chat, I just, uh, spam information just from the time that I'm playing, I'm just talking. And, um, it's hard because it's, people will take screenshots of the chat of what I'm saying, because some of it will go over their head. But, um, anytime you want, like, like if you want a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you can come sit with me. We can have another chat where you and I are talking one-on-one -on -one and I can walk you through the different buttons of what goes through poker. Like I want everyone to have a chance to be involved in this community. And if that's what it takes, I will, I will handhold every person that I like through this experience. And uh, there is not one person I would say no to. So. That's great. And I, from, from where I sit, like I, I, you know, I'm observing you build the community and it really does feel like, um, and you can disagree if I, if I have this wrong, but it's almost like poker is the way, like the, it's the, the community is almost more important than the poker. And, um, I love, you know, you talked about your, your no nonsense, but I see the way you have uh, opinions on how you're building community. Like you are straight, you, um, like, I, I think you're very intentional about how you build and, um, and very inclusive as well. So I've seen the the invites to people who have never played poker to try it out. And um, I love the integration of kind of the emphasis on social because so many people on Farcaster are making kind of the, the URL to IRL friends. So it's the, hey, here's an opportunity to get off the timeline, jump into a live poker, poker game, chat with people. The stakes, to your point, like the stakes are low because you can come yeah. in and just play and maybe you can win, but you're probably going to make a friend and you're going to learn something. So I think it's, it's been really cool to, to watch. And I do need to get into a game um, <laughs> because it's really fun. good. It, yeah. is fun. it is It is fun. For, for me, it's, I don't know when everyone else decides they want to build a product. Uh, for me, I know that the community is an asset. Like when I look at my friends and I see them, I see a bunch of people that want to work together and without them, none of this works, right? When people want to sponsor, they have a product. The people that are in that community, that poker club, are the ones that are recasting and sending it all out. I know that the community is an asset. And I feel like a lot of people, sometimes they lose sight of that. So it's like, of course, I'm willing to help these people and, you know, help them have the most fun and the best experience and get them the most tokens. Because if they're happy, they're going to hit the recast button and we're all going to win. It's like, when people build things, like I build things with a win-win situation in mind. And if it's not, if it's heavily skewed one way or the other, then that's not going to win for me. So it's, I feel like that's why this club is thriving because whenever a situation presents itself, like we just got the deployer grant for $2,500. I won that grant. And I, you know, I, I, when I heard about it, I just immediately thought like, let me win this. And then $2,500 worth of hand tokens are going to go to the club. And um, other people were like, you know, you could just keep that. And it never dawned on me to keep it. Like I just, I won this for the poker club and now we're just going to have millions of tokens to play for. So it's like, I hope when people are building something cool, they know that the community is the true asset and then they'll always make the right decision. So that's, that's how we, that's are how we you, do it. Are you Abundance taking care of yourself stuff? though? Yeah. Oh, sure of course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yesterday I played a full day of Mario Party. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm super mindful of that. Yeah. You know, I, I have good people in my life. You know, you talk to JC or the people in my yeah. life, they're always like, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Like I said, I was taking a day off yesterday. Bitfloor is like, you're an absolute hero. Take as much time as you want. So yeah. I'm really grateful for people like that. I've life. noticed that too. You've been really good about boundaries. Like, here's when we're doing poker. I'm off today. You know, Mondays I'm taking off. Mondays is when I process payments and stuff. And, and you know, we're not doing poker today. And I think that's important that you're you're set, sort of setting up and that you, you're you clearly communicating it and so that people know what the expectation is. And it yeah. seems like everyone's super respectful of that because they know that you're, you know, you're busting your butt too for them to create these experiences that are so fun 
Um, just really enjoyable, even if you lose. Like, you know, if you got nine people at a table, eight of them are going to lose. So, it's like, guess you know. what? Hop in one, hop in the next exactly. one, or hop in the next exactly. day. Like, there's the, yeah. the casino never closes. That was what I used to always tell people. Like, the casino never yeah. closes. And guess what? There's another poker tournament. There's and it, and it's more important to like have that make those connections too. For me, it was like about just being there and having fun, and um, I, and that's what I've always liked about poker is just more the the you know the chat, the fun, a little bit of the competitiveness because I'm you know I like to play games and all that too. But it's more about what you know. It's the other stuff that it's really makes it worthwhile. It's the experience. Like I always said when I go to a casino, you know, I set here's the amount I'm willing to lose, yes. and once I'm done, I'm done. So I've always been pretty good about that, but I'm going there. Like if I lose all that, that was what I paid for my entertainment for the night. Right. Same as I, if right. I went to a show or a concert or whatever, exactly. you know, so it's the same kind of thing. So gamble responsibly, but also in Burr Friends, there's no money on the line. You're not putting anything on the line. It's free, um, just which is awesome. Have fun. <laughs> just come have fun. Just come have fun. It's great. Are you still playing professional poker? Or are you like, did you pull back from that and just kind of doing your own thing now? So I, I still play some, I still play online a little bit. I'll still play a tournament every now and then. And, um, it's actually just like fun now. Cause I don't play it to win, to pay my bills. So now I can kind of get back to it. And then now when I play a tournament, I'll run a contest on Farcast, like who can guess the closest to my stack win win with me. So it's like, I get to do all these fun things, uh, the freedom to have this fun. So I don't think I would ever go back to it and like, put that stress on myself again. It just, you know, I'm past that in my life. I used to be younger and playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars. That that's, that's in the past now. I think I'm like much more relaxed in my life. And I think I want to do more fun things. Like obviously for friends, the short term goal is not to just keep running a, a poker club in perpetuity. I have a much larger goal for this. And I that think was it's my all next like question. Really yeah, <laughs> that was my next I question because I knew that we've talked a little <laughs> bit about what you want to build. And I think it's so yeah. interesting. So talk about that for sure. Yeah. And Adrian said, I'm really intentional. I am. I'm very intentional with this club because there's a lot of different things with poker. There's some complex topics and ideas. And whenever we learn something as a club, I advance them very intentionally. Like when they learn sit and goes, I was like, okay, when we figure out sit and goes and we figure out the technology with the club and how to enter them, put the password in, then we'll move on to something else. A couple of weeks ago, I introduced a whole new game, Pot Limit Omaha. 95% yeah. of the club had never played it. Now they love it, right? It's like being able to share the love that I have for this game is just so fun for me. So, but like I said, that's not my goal right now. But ultimately one day there's a missing piece, right? There's a whole subset of people that don't get to participate in this because they don't know how to play poker. So it's like one day I want to gradually be able to have people have poker heroes, right? If you give them a fake budget of 500 fake dollars and say, I want to draft three players, uh, Tony Hawk's a really good player. He costs more money, uh, but someone who's newer might cost less money. Let's gamble on them. And then each week you draft your poker heroes and you also get rewarded from that pot. So it's like, I have all these ideas. They're swirling They're around. They're kind of along the lines they, of like fantasy football, but with poker. Yes, exactly. And people that fantasy. you actually know on, on the timeline. Yes. So, yeah. And you can actually watch their results every day. You can see who won sit and goes, who won 30 max and go from there and just kind of be excited. But the one thing that's important to me is that nothing, Thing rolls for too long of a time, right? The tournament of champions resets every week. So it's like, if you miss a week, you don't have to feel like you missed everything. So it's everything just resets. So that's the best thing about the poker, the poker tournaments every week. If you go on vacation, you can just come back the next week and reset and play a tournament of champions. It's not like you're going to miss everything because I feel like FOMO in this space is kind of unhealthy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I want, I don't want people to feel like stress, like, oh my God, I missed it. Now I have to win the seat. And it's like, no, there's always the next week. There's always another tournament. You don't have to feel like you're always missing something. And I feel like this poker club also teaches people a little patience and, you know, some waiting yeah. and, you know, not instant gratification. So it's, yeah, but you're no, not going to win every time. Fans. Like yeah. you're not going to win every time, Toadie. You're not going to win every time. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tony. I, I, I'm bringing, I pick on him all of the time, but he is literally it's, one it's of the It's well-founded. Like, yes, please do. Please do pick on him all the time. I love that. He one was of my one closest of the, friends. That, 
<laughs> biggest accounts that like really grabbed onto poker and was like, I love what you're doing. How can I support yeah. you? And yeah. that was one of Tody and I's first interactions. And uh, for that, every time he asks for a poker tournament, I'm just gonna be like, all right, Tody, what do you want to do? I'll do it for you. <laughs> And he's, and well, I think that's also speaks to his um, focus on community as well. So building communities yeah. and when he sees, you know, um, what is, yeah, real sees real kind of thing. So there's, there's that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Moxie. So you've been, your, your fan token was, I think that was the first one I bought when I finally got everything oh. unlocked. Um, and it was because I'm like, oh, I want to be able to play in her tournaments and have that bonus and whatever. I'm like, oh, this, or I think there was one that was like, this is limited to for, you know, for fan token holders or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, this is a great way to use this token. Um, to me, it was like, I've seen certain people use them, I think, in really um, intentional, really good ways. And it's also that you'd say you just need one. Like it doesn't matter if you have 10,000, it's not going to make any difference. Like you just need the one. I'm not looking to gouge people like just, but this creates a membership use case uh, for you, but you've also not created a channel, which I find very interesting. So <laughs> let's talk about these two things. So one, like, okay. like, do you, uh, do you think this is working well for you in terms of the fan token? Would you do anything differently? And why are you thinking about creating a channel or you just know you're not going to do it? So, okay. Two, there's a few questions there. One. No. Um, so the one, the one of the other priorities for me is that Burr friends is never beholding to any one token, right? That it operates freely, that it can operate. If any one of these tokens dies, God forbid. So like right. if Moxie wasn't here tomorrow, it's still going to live on and keep going. Um, that being said, when Moxie did come out, I saw a huge opportunity to reach a lot of unique, unique buyers, right? So when I approach this strategy for Burr, uh, my goal is to have the most unique holders and have them have one token. That's where I started with the tournament champions. Love it. And then from there to go on to have them be a, a regular player in the club. So every day there is a rolling bonus for each tournament each day. Sometimes it's hold three bird tokens, get an extra 300 moxie if you win the tournament. All the way up to hold 20 tokens, get 2,000 moxie. Love it. So it depends on if they want the extra extra moxie. But the people who hold 20 tokens, I see their payments on Monday. They are getting anywhere between you know 50 to 200 dollars based on how much they play during the week. So it's like I just wanted. I knew how many how much I was going to pay out in bonuses. And I've, I've catered that throughout the week to know how much people are playing and kind of adjusted them, how much bonuses I'm going to give out. But really, my goal is just to have the most unique holders who hold that token, because if you have an uneven distribution, it's just not healthy. And I was like, I'm going to have the healthiest distributed coin so that no one can ever tank my price. It's just going to be healthy for across the board. And so far, it's been working. Your second That's very question, smart. <laughs> That's very smart from a tokenomics perspective. It, it is. It's yeah. very smart from a tokenomics perspective. And I think that gets lost in a lot of in a lot of um, thinking. Where when you end up with just whales, it becomes very dis um, disheartening to the smaller holders. Like the it's the what do they call it? The tragedy of the commons kind of thing. Well, so, that's what yeah. that's kind yeah. of what I wanted. Like when people, so, mine was the first day. I had a lot of a lot of whales come in, and like when I I want people to look at my token and say, oh, there's a ton of people that hold ten. There's a ton of people that hold five. And it's just like it's very evenly distributed. But uh, the next question was about having a channel. Channels. I yeah. didn't I didn't want a channel because I knew that I would be more successful in infiltrating other group chats and getting more people. So I was in the Hamigos chat and I was like, oh, hey, there's a tournament going on. And then I probably pulled another 20 people from the Ham ecosystem into Burr Friends. Then I was in Kevin O'Connell's group chat, the Yappers. I was like, oh, hey, we're running tournaments. And then we pulled another 20 people from there. But had I had my own channel, it would have just went there. If I had my own group chat, it would have only been Burr Friend people. So I was just, I knew that if I posted to chat, but floor glows in all the different channels, it would have been more visible. I would have been able to connect with more people. It's not to say I was never going to um, have my own channel, but the second part of that, I knew people already bought my fan token and I wanted to give them some buying relief. There was just too much buying going on. I didn't want them to have to buy a channel token and buy this and buy that and my alpha friends channel and scoop card. It was just like, just too much. Like 
enough. Like, let's just play <laughs> poker, have some fun. You have your one bar token. You can just chill. You don't need to buy anything else now. And like, I just feel like let's just give everyone a break and we'll just all prosper <laughs> for once. <laughs> I love that. I love that thinking. And I think it was also very smart. You spent a lot of time in the Reply Guys channel replying and just doing the smart thing of connecting with people. And that's how they, that's how you were popping up in my feed was in yeah. other channels. Cause I may have not have, you know, thought to follow your channel if you had launched one, but I was seeing you in Reply Guys and I was seeing you in other places. And it was like, oh, what is this? What is she doing? This is interesting. So it was, Michael. I was seeing it on my feed long before I finally got into a game. <laughs> I was seeing it like all over the place. You were everywhere. And I think that That's, was, you know, very smart. I just very want it to be hard to ignore, right? And it's, you become hard to ignore <laughs> you if did you're well. everywhere, right? But if you're, in, you're, in, you're in your own channel, no one can see you really. <laughs> a really good point. I think we need to take a lesson from that big time. Um, I, uh, I really like, you know, I like your approach a lot. Um, so I want to talk about one more thing and get your opinion okay. on it, but also because we had not talked about this yet. And this is sort of what happened with Moxie this week. And there was a little bit of a little bit of a, you know, little concerns on the timeline. Um, so this was the first thing I saw was from JC um, Sparks, who is uh, right behind me right there. Um, the, the and also my background. I made it. And also your background. Yep. Um, look, Ma, I made it. And it was, she was replying to a DC that she got from Moxie. Hi, hi. You've reached the lifetime cap on Moxie rewards without having fans. Moxie is a community project that enables everyone to earn and live together. Having fans allows other members to participate in your success. Please launch your fan token to continue earning Moxie. Um, earnings will continue immediately upon scheduling your fan auction. And there was a couple other folks posting about this. And then Jason had posted, Beta Shop had posted this with a little bit more explanation. Users should earn more than 100,000 Moxie lifetime are now receiving the DC from Airstack. Once received, your earnings will automatically pause until you schedule your fan token so that the community can win with you. We feel like $250 of free rewards is fair and generous amount before requiring users to participate with their own fan tokens. Other notes, once you schedule your fan token launch, your earnings start back up again. You can still claim past rewards and airdrops without a fan token. We are not taking away anything from anyone that was already given. Okay, so I had posted something about this um, and I won't read the whole thing because it was long, but essentially just saying that uh, in a very, no FUD here, no fun of Moxie, no fun of the team. Um, I've learned a lot since I posted this, by the way. Uh, I thought it was fair. I thought they were, you know, they were making a fair point. I didn't like being forced to launch a fan token. I felt like what they were trying to achieve might be able to be achieved in other ways. And that was my point here. I've had really good conversations with the Moxie team about this. Um, and the other thing was... Um, that uh, it was really the way in which it was delivered. So that was my biggest issue with this whole thing is I feel like it could have been communicated a little bit better, given a little bit more lead up time and people wouldn't have, I think some people felt blindsided by this and felt like there was some language about being a non-player and that felt icky. And, and that was actually JC's term, icky. It felt icky. It feels like, wait a minute, I've been buying tokens and I've been participating in various ways. I don't feel like I'm a non-player, but I do understand the Moxie's team side of this as well. So, so what are your thoughts on this? So I think that, um, I think the Moxie team is falling into the same pitfall that a lot of teams fall into. Um, I think they're listening to, uh, a certain subset of their community, which is mm -hmm. the, the biggest bag holders and they're, they're cheerleaders, right? The people who love the, the product and whatever the Moxie team says, the, team, the cheerleaders are going to go, yeah, that's great. Right. Um, but they don't have anyone who they don't have any objectors there. I don't think anyone there is like, Hey, maybe stop and think about this. But, uh, the one, the biggest pitfall is the doing too much. They're doing too much and they're doing too much in a short period of time. Um, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, Yasek, who yeah. I recently developed a relationship with, a friendship with, um, over a call, uh, I'm really blunt with him now. I'm just super honest with him. Like we, our relationship has been tumultuous. I've yelled at him on Firecaster and I've, but now we're friends. And now I just realize I just have to be really blunt and be like, you're, you're, you're fucking up. I'm sorry. This is not no good. Um, and I feel like somebody always needs to have that kind of nag in there and be like, Hey, this isn't right. You, you have to step back. And I feel like the Moxie team just makes decisions really willy nilly. Like, how did you just come up with this and be like, everyone needs a fan token and then just launch it. The, the next week like everyone just locked all these tokens how could you possibly just make a decision this big the following week i don't know how any protocol could just jump on something like that that big um yeah. that's crazy to me uh it's crazy that they could make all these decisions week to week to week to week like they nerfed the emissions they did this they moved all the earnings to this person or it's been a lot it's just, yeah it's been a lot it's a yeah. lot in a, in a month and I used to think that when DGen was making all these changes month to month, that the space was intolerant of it. And I'm like, Yasik, you're going to lose everybody. But look at this. Yeah. Now Moxie changes it every week. We locked all these tokens and now yeah. like everything's different four weeks later. So it's like, when are these teams going to slow down? Actually, every team ne needs a comps person. I'm just going to throw it out there. If you're a protocol, the first line <laughs> in your budget should be a comms person, please, for the sake of our industry. No more news from your actual person, right? Please hire someone <laughs> who can who can put yeah. this shit in words that is readable, that's digestible, and will be a positive force on the space because you're hurting the token, you're hurting the chart, and like the sentiment. You have to yeah. stop and think about what you're saying. I said the same thing to J Yasik. I'm like, you can't just throw, throw, throw this stuff out there. You need someone to look this over and say, is this the right verbiage? Should I even be sending it out? Right. Like, cause probably yeah. you shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, I just think we're moving too fast, even though I saw a Moxie community call update that says we're not going to keep changing shit. And then the following week, they're like, we're changing <laughs> <No>. it again. <laughs> oh, we were just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing I think, is, yeah, I, a lot I, of, a lot of wisdom there. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. just like, someone in the corner needs to be the voice of reason. Like I understand that you have a whole people group of people that love you. That's great. But like, even I and Burr friends have a group of people trying to tell me what the fuck to do. I'm like, guys, yeah. I have been playing poker for a long time. I know how it works. I know what I'm doing. I know how many people are supposed to be seated. Like, just let me, let me do this. Let me cook. I got this. But I just feel like it, it would behoove everyone to have a little devil on your shoulder to say, Hey, Maybe we should think about this. But anyway, I digress. Um, this yeah. is why Burr Friends is not tied to any one protocol, because I can't control what any of these people do. I can't control what this coin does, what this one does. But when I saw Moxie come out, I was like, I want to hold hands with all of these protocols. And when Moxie came out, yeah. they should. DGen should get its shit together. Ham should be working with it. All of these things should work together so we can all live in harmony going into election season because that's the world I want to live in. Like a bright, a bright shiny election season where everything is pumping, right? That'd be great. Um, <laughs> but I lot digress. Of, okay. There's so much. <laughs> this is, so Cross, much. what's your long-term plan? I'm like, I want everything yeah. to pump so I can, you know, be yes. rich in November. So we can do all kinds of fun things. Yeah. We that's can do amazing goal, things in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, I just, the other thing is, you know, when you applied for the Moxie grant, this is the other, I don't think you saw this yet, but when you no. applied for the Moxie grant, anybody who applied for the grant has to KYC. I have to fill out this yeah. form by, by October 20th. That makes sense. And then somebody else, I realized, uh, I just saw it. If you want to pull it up, it's C-O-M-P-E-Z. He's a dev who mm -hmm. made all these frames for open rank. But basically, yeah. I think because he filled out this KYC and revealed his location, he got banned from Moxie from somehow. He just got banned from the whole protocol. Um, I don't know why. I did, I saw it right before we were coming on this podcast. Ooh, I'll have to go look. For, yeah, I didn't for see whatever it. reason, his KYC got him banned from using the protocol. Like, oh, interesting. I don't know why. So I read your post last night, and I feel like if they're going to force people into fan tokens or call them non like non participating non -player. members. Yeah. Your 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 history should prove that you're a player. I don't right. think anybody should be forced into a fan token. Like I don't know what country's legal jurisdictions are. I don't know what like how could you possibly force someone into this? So yeah, so that was sort of my that was my underlying um point was that I 
I think it's different. I think if you're just launching a fan token and you're like, whatever, I don't care. Um, it, you know, that's fine, whatever. But if for me, if I'm going to do something like that, it's going to be intentional. There's going to be reason. I'm not just going to throw it out there because I know what com what's going to come with that. And you just made that point is that people are going to start to have some expectations. They're going to have opinions about what you're doing because as soon as you're, as soon as they have something financially tied to what you're doing, there's, there's always that it's just always yeah. going to happen. And it might be one or two people, but it might be enough that it's going to take some attention and that's a tax on my time. And I, maybe I don't have that time right now. It might be something I want to do down the road. It might be something we want to do for GM Farcasters channel, but we haven't made that decision. We want it to be an intentional decision, not just like, because I'm being forced to. And also this is crypto. Pretty much most of people in crypto are freaking like, very rebellious and if you tell us we have to do something it's probably it's gonna not. be you're, you're gonna get the opposite <laughs> like, like i i i just thought when this whole thing came out i just saw so much opportunity i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna have a fan token yeah. i'm gonna think through xyz and then the other thing i thought was like nobody else is gonna do this like i'm yeah. the only one thinking out a full-fledged plumbing and operation for a poker club I was like, it would yeah. be great if if everyone else did this, then I could see a world where we all thrive in different corners of the of the internet. But that's actually not what happened. What actually happened was exactly what always happens. People farm <laughs> the token, try to make the most yeah. money. Nobody actually uses the product for what it's supposed to be because if we did, we would have a nice place to live. <laughs> we would have poker. This is why we chess, can't have nice things. Fiction. This is exactly <laughs> why we because yeah. you know what? If if they would have just used the protocol the way it was supposed to be, Moxie, everybody, then what I would have had. I would have had a full fledged clinic on how to put on a great fan token. I was my yeah. goal. My next, my next evolution was going to be, Hey, five people come under my wing, me and Toadie Hawk, actually, whoever holds both our fan token, we're going to teach you how to make a great fan token. Now I'm going to take fan okay. fiction. Yeah. I'm going to, here's the plumbing for this. We're going to fan fiction, chess, fitness, this, that, and the other. And now we're all going to earn incentives through Moxie, but that's actually not what happened. That's not what's going to happen. We're just right. going to, we're just going to try to, milk each other for as much money as possible uh, until the protocol dies or something happens or something gives and like that's just not a world i want to live in so it's like now i'm just going to make bro friends the best possible environment so that nobody has to live in this like stressed environment of like how much moxie am i making what do i have to do and it's like i feel like i'm just rowing against the grain of good content constantly in this space and it's like what else can we do to combat this. It's like every right. day. And I I'm think you're like, doing the right do? thing. Like you're creating something that's real, that's substantive, people like and enjoy. Build build products people want to use, right? So that whole thinking. And I'm seeing in other places too. Like I think we see the same thing yeah. with we always talk about um Afro Chicks, Naomi, and what yeah. she's been doing. And then launching, you know, AC Track Club and doing higher athletics and teaming up and doing these these activations. And I think we are seeing people who are recognizing the opportunity. Farcaster is still new, growing. You have an opportunity to be first and early and create something that's unique. It may not be unique everywhere, but on right. here it is. So you can tap in and, and really create something special. So it's, you know, that's going to have a much more substantial long-term um, benefit than sort of just trying to flip coins and make a little bit of something, you know, this week or something like that. So yeah. you keep doing you, you're on the right track. And I think with um, the Moxie <laughs> team, like I get the problem they're trying to solve. And I'm hoping that maybe they heard some feedback that they can make some adjustments. And I already heard some things being recognized on that um, yesterday of, of Jason so. saying, I you know, beta shop saying, Hey, you know what? We did not communicate this well like we'll we'll do better no so let's hope you know that there's been some learning from this past experience i hope i hope i hope i hope um so uh we've got uh a few comments in the chats like we need a meme of poker go burr i agree <laughs> um and uh this from uh gg i remember once burr said in tables that your goal is to make burr friends rich and moxie <laughs> it was early when moxie which was. i did <laughs> yeah 
which you did. Um, uh, but it was, you know, it's the thing is that it's not just about you. You're doing this to like benefit the whole community. And I think that's what makes it really important and special. So I appreciate that. Um, it's, this has been great. I, we've been chatting for a while. We need to wrap. We have been on here for much longer than normal. But I could probably talk to you for like another hour easily. I, um, and Adrian would tell me. I will me. definitely be back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we going to play it. poker. We're going to play poker on Friday, the first Friday of the month. So that's November 1st, um, for the next Farcaster Fridays. We're working on getting some sponsors for that so we can make it uh, a little bit more fun. And Burr friends will be having their poker tournaments and they'll determine like who gets those seats in whatever way they want to. I'll have a few seats that hopefully we're going to work with some sponsors to add some additional poker games that lead up to that Farcaster Friday and create more opportunity for people to play and have fun and learn and connect. So, yeah, I think it's um, I love what you're doing. I love your. And we were talking before even we got on today, Adrian and I were having a conversation about abundance mindset, which we often do. Um, and I love that you you just embody that as well. Of like everyone can win. It doesn't have to be PvP, even though you come from a world of PvP. I do. Right? I do. The experience <laughs> doesn't have to be PvP, right? Even if the game is. Um, it, there's a much bigger thing here. And I I think that's super important that we, you know, really lean into that. Cause I think that has a much more long-term benefit to us all of like, this 100%. isn't just about, yeah, this isn't about the short term. Like let's think bigger um, and grow, grow this whole community. Um, amazing. Adrian, anything else we didn't get to do? I was, I wanted to do a few lightning round questions, but I don't think we have time, but um, <laughs> anything else you wanted to ask Melissa? Cause I kind of dominated the conversation here. Um, well, I let you guys riff on Moxie because <laughs> you're like, I'm out. You had some things. <laughs> you had some things that needed to get off your chest. So, yeah, she did. Um, feelings check in. Feelings check in. Moxie edition. <laughs> you know, we. I think we all have some Moxie feelings. We need to get out. I think every day we should just have a Moxie session. Well, <sighs> Little, little, um, yeah, little feelings. Yeah, feelings but just to it. double down and or kind of do, oh, double down. I didn't mean oh, to say that. I meant, I meant to say double click, but <laughs> I think I'm getting influenced we'll by the poker crowd. Um, on on just the kind of the the abundance mindset and um, Melissa, we met through our common friend JC, and it's one of those things that I do think like tokens come and go. It's about the friends you meet along the way. And it's just how many times are people I'm meeting on Farcaster who embody the abundance mindset and are introducing people. And as soon as JC said, you need to meet Burberry. And yep. I just knew immediately, I'm like, yep, and I'm going to like her. And yep. this has happened multiple times with multiple people. I was going to say, um, JC is, that is, she is great for that. She is she like really is. super connector and she will. Like she'll just get it. Look, you have to meet this person, and she's always right. Always right. I have not. She's yeah. not been wrong once about her um, calls on this. Of like, you need to JC check with this and person. I have something else cooking, by the way. Ooh. I can't talk about it right now, but we. Okay, have when that cooking. happens, come on back because we <laughs> want to hear will. about it. And yeah, behind I, Adrian right now is um, is a uh, a JC creation uh, that I forgot to show. So let me just show that real quick. Because, um, yeah, we needed some oh, good vibes. From her adventure ch is this from her yeah. adventure channel? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So bringing good vibes back to the timeline. And I loved it. It is a that perfect picture. rainbow. Also, on, I think, perfect. on perfect. Rainbow Claim Day. I don't know if you heard that rainbow yes. has been promoting yes. a uh, an airdrop. Um, look at that beautiful rainbow. And it's perfection. It's almost like JC knew we needed good vibes on the timeline. We, so we did. we did. Happy. JC's the best. Yeah. She is. We happy friday her. everyone happy friday everyone and with that we're gonna call it and um melissa if you can stay on for just a minute but we're gonna we're gonna do our closing um yep. and we're gonna end the stream here but thank you everyone it has been an absolute pleasure i have loved this whole chat and i cannot wait to play uh poker again in a couple weeks with you and we're working on something else Little nouns, I'm coming at you in just a minute to throw uh, a poker prop exciting. up. So if you have a little noun and you're in the chat right now, um, get those votes ready because I have something fun. 
And um, yeah, and with that, everyone have a happy Friday and bye-bye. Yes.